Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Oluwa Shindara Layemi and it's so good to have you back. On this YouTube channel, I talk about faith, career, relationships, lifestyle and every other good stuff. If this is your first time, thank you for clicking on this video when you saw it. Please don't um, forget to like watch other content and please share with your friends and please subscribe. Um, press the notification bell so that whenever there's a new video, you'll be the first person to be aware. I'm presenting a wedding planning series at the moment because this is the stage I am in my life. So we're going to be talking about a lot of wedding planning and wedding content. So now, um, so today I'm actually okay. So I actually put up like a post one time about um, going for wedding, going for premarital counseling and all of that. And um, someone was like, "Ah, oh, you can talk about it on your channel." I know it was just a suggestion. I felt like, "Oh, this would have been like this would be like a very good thing to actually put out because I know that a lot of people really need to learn." about i mean this i mean a lot of people going to marry nowadays and just gamble it and they're like oh we'll sort it out and and then recently also i saw a post from um, ola shweto so ola shweto is like a marriage counselor i know that he and his wife i am um, they run a counseling marriage counseling and all of that relationship academy and um i don't know if it was he or his wife one of them was just saying that people would spend so much on wedding gowns or decor food and all of that and they would not be able to pay for marriage counseling as as um cheap as marriage counseling is compared to um the other things that you spend money on during your during your wedding and i mean now that i'm in that phase i understand that truthfully so it's not like wedding planning um premarital counseling are so cheap however like they are i mean they're cheap compared to um, how much you pay you pay on decor food how much you pay on your dress how much you pay on makeup and all of that um you find that a lot of most of them will not will not cost as much as that but we will comp where I compromise the one that's like so important to our marriage and then focus on the things that are going to be like difficult things the things that we can i mean decor after that day you, you're bringing out the decor your makeup after that day you're going to clean it off like there are no value i think clothes you can even still have clothes like food everybody eats and then they just go and that's the end of the day like do you understand that's the end of the whole event the day is gone but your marriage stands and i mean i hear a lot of people now preach about the fact that you need to prepare more about the marriage prepare more on the marriage and leave the wedding for the event planner to plan while the event planner is going around making sure the day is perfect go around and try to make sure that you secure your marriage on the right foundation even the bible says that if the foundation is destroyed what can the righteous do so now marital counseling basically are like therapies that prepare um couple or intending couple for marriage so basically it doesn't mean that if you have marital counseling your marriage will never break do you understand it's just like an antidote just like now you are you, you just like now you take anti-malaria um to prevent yourself from having malaria to prevent the effect when you finally have the malaria do you get it doesn't mean that oh because you take anti-malaria you will never have malaria it just means that when malaria comes at least you have created antibodies in your system that can like fight it do you understand so that is how it is you guide yourself on to be able to, to be able to fight or to be able to have things that will make you stronger against the raining days so there are going to be issues in marriage even the marriages that you think that are so perfect that you think that have like that wow you find that i mean what you see on the internet what you even see when you go to the house is not the same there are people that you would even live with them and you'd be like these couples don't fight but they finish all their fight in the bedroom and they will necessarily not even come out to like start arguing with you anything they've done what they want to do in the bedroom and they're out laughing so like marriages have have i mean a lot of issues but they really don't talk about it and that is why I've, i'm like i've made it my point or my point of command to actually like speak with every if any couple that I know around me to make sure that everybody attends premarital counseling. So there are two different ways you can have premarital counseling. Either you go to it for a professional premarital counseling or you take you, you do it in a religious um setting. Now a lot of times, especially for Christians, I don't know about Muslims, I know that they also conduct a particular kind of marital counseling for muslims but i know for christians um most of the time most of the time not all churches but most churches you must actually attend premarital counseling before to, before you get married in that church but now we see that now there's a lot of people don't even get married in church again they just call a priest school and to come and join them and that's all and um i mean and you don't even pay for for professional class press pre um, Personally, I'm actually attending the boat, but I've, I'm done with my marital, um, my marital counseling class, and I actually prefer the professional one to the um, religious one. Yes, they tried. I mean, the manual for reading is very rich, very to have at old. You can actually just get like a book to read, to have and to order. I'll probably put the title um at the, the screen. I'll put the title somewhere down so you can have it, so you can see it. So have at old. It's actually very deep, and there's a lot of things that you actually get to learn. You can actually just take it to read on your own. However, 
um, doing professional counseling, there are a lot of practical things that we learned that we know that even if, I mean, there's some things that, oh my God. See, I don't even know how to explain premarital counseling. I'm going to give you a lot of examples about things that I learned during my premarital counseling class. So I did my, myself and my fiance did other premarital counseling at um, REM, Relationship and Life Essentials, Marriage, sometimes I don't really know their full name, but I know it's called REM. Um, and if you, I mean, if you message me privately, I could share their details with you. They are very good and very affordable. This is a free promo. <laughs> this is a free um, ad. But then nobody sent me to do this. I'm just doing this because I think that it's very important. And I mean, there were a lot of like practical, practical, um, this initially when we first registered, but I sent a questionnaire and we were told to fill this. So this questionnaire will give you like, relative. we don't even know if you are getting scored or not. Like just answering relatively and it's opens up a lot of things first it allows you to know your personality type allows you to know your love language allows you to know um your your fine your take on finance take on family values take on a lot of things and then you discuss these things with your partner she allows you to know where you're coming from and i even had somebody saying that oh you're supposed to even do premarital counseling before you decide to get married so that you know if you should continue or not there are a lot of red flags a lot of times um we ignore but i mean take going through due process helps us to like helps us to like um take cognizance of those things that we're ignoring because the truth is you're going into a relationship with someone that you love or it's presumed that you love the person and so um most times you might not take cognizance of some very little little things that you would take cognizance of when the person goes to see your pastor you are doing marital counseling the person you can take the person to see a therapist you are doing marital counseling the person goes to meet another person like maybe his own pastor you are like having conversations they can begin to see these traits because they are not in love you are the one in love so they can see you are seeing your parents, you are seeing when, when due process is followed and time is given, you find out that you will be able to under, you will be able to see some red flags that you will not necessarily see if you skip all those processes. So those processes are very important. They are very, very important. I remember during one of my during um, one time during my my, my marital um counseling class, the professional one, um the I'm going to put a picture, I'm going to put a picture, maybe on maybe tumbling or something, I'm just going to put a picture of it. And um, the the counselor actually like tied our eyes and then she told us to hold each other and walk. And both of us were actually blindfolded and we were walking. And after a while, she actually removed my she removed the blindfold on my on my own face and told me to hold my fears and keep leading him. And you no, know, I kept on leading him, but it still felt like as if I didn't know that I would have the blindfold has been removed from my eyes. And I kept on leading him and all of that and after that, she was like, what, what, could, we, what could we um bring out from this? I mean, we kept on saying different, and everything was right. One of the things we were, one of the things we were able to bring out from that scenario was that in relationships or in marriage, somebody will always have more experience than the other in a relationship. Because the both of you, because you think that the both of you are blind, you would expect that. Because, I mean, I was already, she had removed the blindfold from my own eyes, but I kept on allowing him to lead me. As she was saying that, you would expect that I mean, society expects that for example let me give you the perfect example we're talking about for example finances the woman is more the woman is better when it comes to finances than the man but society expects that the man should be the one in charge of the finances when it is person that is that is more learning that should be in charge but you mean you expect a society this is what society expects so we must do this like this and even when you know that you are you are more opened you've allowed yourself to allow the man lead because this is what society is. You don't even, they're not even letting him know that you are, you, you can't see. No, I'm not saying that you're not the man lead. I'm just saying that you're not even allowing the man to know that, oh, I'm more, I'm, I'm better in this, in this point. I'm better in this area. Let me lead. Rather, you rather go with him because, oh, this is what society, or what would society say? Or what would this person say? Or what would that person say? So a lot of times you need to allow the person who is more experienced, who can see, to lead. And you take, I mean, you, I mean, you, you follow. Why in another case, I mean, if it's the man that is more knowledgeable about this particular area, let him lead. If the man is knowledgeable about the particular area, let her lead. Do you understand? So, like, that was another, like, scenario that I got to see. And a lot of scenarios, a lot of scenarios, a lot of games that we we'll play. And then after that, like, you think, it was so fun. You think that you're just playing game, but then you're talking about something else. Some of the things that marital counseling will open your eyes to is finances, finances. Um, some people think that oh you must have joint accounts when you get married no it depends on your personality type it depends on who is the saver and who is the spender it depends on how you both be understanding our money if you have a financial person in a relationship and you have another person who is um, into stockbroking and all of that the financial person will be able to like take more money rates the the, the stockbroker or the um this is stockbroker was the realtor the realtor might, might feel like oh this is an investment opportunity let me just take it but the financial person understands 
I mean, the financial risk and all of that thing. So you ex- expect that the financial point should be the one to take the lead. But you're saying that, no, I'm the man of the house. Let me take the lead. I remember I was watching one, uh, I was watching a family, a family um, during an interview session. And they were seeing this particular couple, they, they mixed, uh, they missed the, I mean, do the do class. I don't want to use the word because of um, YouTube and restrictions. Um, they, I mean, and after that, they found out that for the first five years in their relationship, that was like the major issue they were having. And they realized later on that that was one class they missed. Now, it's possible that even after they actually like went to that class, they might still be having issues. But I can, I, I can guarantee that at least to 98%, they would... They might still have issues, but they'll be able to figure it better. They'll be able to figure it faster. Not like having like five years issue. Do you get Because they missed that class. So... I mean, you have to like talk about even the sex in marriage. You have to, you have to, to like deal with the issue. You have to deal about your fears, your expectations, your personality, communication, decision making. Oh my God, it's such a robust class. It's such a robust class, and it's something that you should invest in if you're about to get married. Now, if you've also like gotten married and you think that you missed the class, but I mean, it's something that you want to actually do. It's not too late. You can start building that foundation now. Remember at the beginning, I said that the Bible says if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Even if God said, this is your husband. You know, I spoke about, there was a video I spoke about, um, you should go back, I'll probably tag the video. Um, God said he's the one, but these are not working well. Is God a liar? And I was saying that the fact that God has said, this person is the one, doesn't mean that everything is going to go smoothly. It's just like you've prayed to God to give you a car. God has given you a car. Now, will he teach you how to drive it? No. You need to follow the manner. You need to go to, you need to go to driving school. And that's just the way it is. To follow the manner and Bible. Go to driving school, premarital counseling. Do you understand? To enable you to able to understand some dynamics of marriage. Um, I mean, the devil is really tampering with the home. And if we as Christians, I, I expect that. I mean, most of the people that are watching this are believers. Um, I'm always careful about what Christians. Most of these are believers. Whether you're religious, whether it is Christian or Muslim, you're a believer, you believe in God, and you understand the principles of God and everyone and so you should be able to understand that like marriage is a marriage is an institution marriage i mean a lot of principles on earth a lot of things on earth government society and all of that um will get better if each and every one of us make our marriage to be a model for us make our marriage to like um stand the thing is with all of i mean you go on instagram you go on social media and you see that a lot of times one marriage or the other is having problem but if you look at it if you look at most of this carry check like 10 marriages that you know that are problem i'm trying to see if they follow if they went for premarital counseling if they went for premarital counseling was it just church because a lot of time most churches do also help they just come they just talk i know someone that was telling me that she went for church counseling and during church counseling they told them to write out things they didn't like in their spouse or their intending spouse they wrote it out and after that they collected the papers and till they finished premarital class that's like what seven classes they never spoke about it as in they never spoke about it and you know what it cr- created a dent now in our relationship because they were they, were, they spoke out their fears but their fears were never um treated properly so the the affairs at that and now her husband was like so this is where the things that you had against me you couldn't tell me that's way to like to meet a counselor and all of that i feel like if they are treated it properly they will have seen another dimension to the fact that they spoke out not that it was supposed to be used against them do you understand? There were a lot of things that my fiance said during our private account. I'm like, what? Why am I just hearing this for the first time? Why don't I even know that this is what I have done? But then, because it was treated there, so I really didn't even see that something against him. I rather even appreciated the fact that he said it out rather than taking that kind of like taking that against me and taking it into the relationship or into the marriage do you understand so we we're able to sort a lot of things i understood his perspective about some things i he let out his expectations his fear and i was able to like we we're able to like tackle it so like now we're going to our marriage with like a lot of energy a lot of wisdom we're wiser we know how to tackle a lot of things and we understand that our marriage is supposed to be a model for every other person to like follow we understand that we must get it right we have an assignment and we are building purpose in marriage do you understand in our with our own marriage counseling with our own premarital counseling we we're, we're allowed to like design a manual a user manual um we're given everything that makes you design a user manual you know just like a blender will come with a manual i mean we human beings also come with a manual and this manual we wrote it ourselves so i mean user responsibility how to use me caution and all of that in fact it's such just so worded and we're supposed to do it to each other do you understand so that if tomorrow if 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 he's behaving somehow and i need to know how to sort it out i can go back to that manner and look at i mean what it would need and it's not just like a manner that we're just using forever it's going to be reviewed so we can see that because you change in marriage you change i mean things anything can make you change you can know that okay 
this is how to now navigate this situation at a particular time matter counseling is such an eye-opener and you don't want to enter marriage completely clueless there are a lot of resources out there that that would mislead you so it's proper that as christians we also don't make that mistake you wonder why the unbelievers they have good marriage and they are, they are blossoming and everything is working now we're christians we're suffering in silence and we can't divorce do you understand but it's because they have gotten some things right and we haven't so we need to actually look up look back at our foundation if you have not gotten married i beg you in the name of god i beg you do not overlook premarital counseling even if you're not doing even if you're not doing a professional one and i don't really see why you shouldn't because if you're spending so much money on your wedding you should be able to spend money on your 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 marriage but if you're even going to be following the church i know there are some churches that if, if I, even me, I was wondering, should I like change my church some months before wedding so that I can attend their premarital counseling? Like, um, this, this star, if you're in Nigeria, this star, I know that this star has a very rich marital counseling class. And so, maybe for some redeemed churches, like yeah, their pastors are like into counseling and all of that. Like, my, 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 my counselor is a redeemed pastor. Imagine what she'll be doing for her own church members. Like, that's just like knowledge on a platter of gold. If you have those kind of pastors, please take it serious, I beg you. Even in church, see the funniest thing is that even in church, eh, you know, as much as everyone just looks at it that oh, church they will not be so rich and all of that. There's so many things I learned in church during church premarital counseling. I was like, wow, like I didn't know, and it was just an eye opener for me, and it just really made me to understand to see things at a different perspective. Trust me, at a different perspective, and made me to enter into marriage knowing that yes, I have an assignment. I have an assignment, and it must work. My marriage must work. <laughs> yes, so. This is just me doing this video to enlighten us about the importance of premarital counseling and why it's important that you go into marriage um, having some understanding about this particular things everything you need to know if you're actually if you're going for professional if I, even if you're going for i know from the redeem point of view that redeem marital counseling class if there isn't that manual is power packed power packed everything is discussed there everything anything that you're going to grieve sex um finances decision making roles in marriage culture dealing with in-laws friends phone everything is discussed and if you now go for a professional one oh my god it gives you different perspective again to issues and um it allows you to be able to like understand understand a lot of things see it was even as bad as having people into your house know the kind of people that are going to give like we're taught something about visa know the kind of person you're going to give deportee asylum res um, permanent residence you get your nannies and all of those living people are going to give their permanent residence but understand that you need to have a family vision family culture that they they're going to run by it anybody that comes to stay in your house must be able to run by it so um that's being said this is all i can say for now i mean there are a lot of things that i really want to talk about but i mean this is just like it just be a short video this is just me encouraging that's what this video is about encouraging you to make sure that you don't take, neglect the importance of premarital counseling you would attend and come back to see thank god that this girl spoke about it i was surprised that some people who have been like married for like six years do not even know what the husband's love language is and i'm like you know i'm like i'm shocked like that was like one of the first things i spoke about when i met my fans and i i know that see it might work for some people now don't get me wrong it might work for some people some people have very beautiful marriages 40 years down the line they even know what their personality is like fine it worked for them because and you find that why it worked for them is because they actually have like probably the same kind of personality or um i mean they have like a particular kind of personality that both of them are actually were supposed to like get along do you understand so it's not even be a big deal for them to actually work out for them but these people are already having issues and i was like this might actually be one of the issues like you don't even know how she wants to be loved you i mean she's probably like you're probably like getting her gifts and that. she's like don't get me gifts just stay at home with me that's all i want and it's just as simple as that but your mind are like wow well, getting you a gift i just got to an apartment i just did, I just did that but that's really not what she wants she just wants you to stay at home with her that is all but you're not aware and you're not and ignorance is not even like an excuse do you understand you're supposed to know so um i mean this is just me to this is just me trying to like admonish us to like not overlook it or not miss those classes you could just say oh, i'm busy i'm going to market to get this and when, when, when will i have the time for premarital counseling give it to wedding plan that's why you need a wedding plan i would dedicate other people and make sure that you attend premarital counseling good enough it's not um just a one month thing it's like you can have it for like six months just like few days 
in a month a few hours in a week self just make sure that you have it thank you very much for watching you know, this this um channel um i will probably link the numbers of my counselors and the name which link you there anybody can name it in the next three years i do these videos with your understanding that it is not just now that people are going to watch it anybody can come back like 10 years later to come and watch it because this youtube is going to be there forever so please don't forget to like share subscribe leave your comments below i want to know what your comments what, you what your thoughts are about this and until the next time you watch me remain blessed i said it's the last time that if you want me to do a wedding planning q and a i'll be more than willing to do it let me just know in the comment section and yes i love you all bye